Hi, grade two. We are missing you here at campus. I decided to take this video up in the treehouse above the playground. See the soccer field behind me. Everything's empty without you. We miss you so much here at campus, but I hope you guys are safe and having fun wherever you are making this video today because I'm going to read you one of my favorite stories. The Remarkable Farkle McBride. So we've been talking about instruments and well, Farkle has a problem with instruments and there is a solution at the end. I hope you enjoy. <clears throat> the Remarkable Farkle McBride by John Lithgow. So many pages. All right. Oh, pity the prodigy, Farkle McBride. No matter what instrument poor Farkle tried, whether strumming or blowing or drumming or blowing, his musical passions were unsatisfied. When Farkle McBride was a three-year-old tyke, all freckle, bony, and thin, he astonished his friends and family alike by playing a superb violin. He went readily deedly deedly dee with all of the strings at his side. Readily deedly deedly dee, the remarkable Farkle McBride. Can you see all those adult string players? And like he has to climb up the stairs to be able to play and see the music. Three-year-old. My three-year-old cannot do that. But when he was four, Farkle played no more. In spite of his parents' beseeching, he shattered the records he used to adore. And he smashed up the resin and he ripped every score. He threw his fiddle and bow on the living room floor and shouted, enough of your screeching. When Farkle was five, his melodical gift once again bore rhapsodical fruit. The woodwinds inspired his spirits to lift and he quickly mastered the flute. He went rudely tootly tootly toot with all of the winds at his side. Rudely tootly tootly toot the remarkable Farkle McBride. You can see him there. These are the audience members watching. Some cellos. And then they so uh, maybe a, what is that, an oboe, I think, and some other flutes. This is the bassoon, and back there you see the, oh, back there you see the, the timpani. Oh. But at six, Farco flung his flute in the lake, notwithstanding its lyrical trill. And he stomped on the dock till you'd think it would break. That's it, he exclaimed. I've had all I can take. That tootling gives me a brutal headache. It's so wimpy and whiny and shrill. But when Farkle was seven, a different sound rekindled his musical flame. He became the most expert trombonist around, and the boulevards buzzed with his name. He went room petty doom petty doom petty doom with all of the brass at his side. Vroom, petty doom, petty doom, petty doom. The remarkable Farkle McBride. But when he was eight, he declared to his parents' despair. And as everyone else might have guessed, I can't stand. 
stand the trombone with its blasts and its blares. That racket is more than my eardrum can bear. So return it or throw it away, I don't care. I despise it, just like all the rest. What do you think happens next? Let's see, we had string family, we had woodwind family, brass family. What's the last one? When Farkle was nine, both his father and mom were bursting with pride and affection. For Farkle learned xylophone, cymbal, and drum, the entire percussion section. And that, I believe, is Beethoven in the back. Beethoven's one that had crazy hair, so I'm guessing that's a picture of Beethoven. He went boom, crash, clangity, clash, all of the cram clamor he could provide. Tinkly, ding, bingity, crash, the remarkable Farkle McBride. But soon he fell prey to his usual gloom, despite all the praise and the flattery. At first a sigh, then a sulk, then a frown, then a fume and an ear-splitting tantrum that emptied the room. I can't take it, he bellowed, the crash and the bang and the clang of the battery. Poor Farkle at ten, howsoever renowned, had reached the end of his musical tether. But then he discovered his favorite sound was musicians playing together. It happened like this. The conductor caught cold on the day of a major recital. You've got to replace him, uh, young Farkle was told. Your cooperation is vital. So he took the baton and he gave the downbeat and kaboom, the foundations were shaken by glorious music, bombastic and sweet that filled up the hall and emptied into the street. From the, in from, uh, the, yeah, from the instruments that he had forsaken, they went readily, rudely, room petty, bang. Bravo, the spectators cried. Diddly, doodly, doom petty, clang. The remarkable Farkle McBride. Woo. Since that sparkling night, Maestro Farkle McBride. What does Maestro mean? Maestro is the name of a conductor. So like somebody that's called, that is a conductor of an orchestra or of a choir, we would not call them conductor, Miss Becca. You could call them Maestro, Miss Becca. And you could call me Maestro, Miss Becca, but usually that's for uh, professional conductors. Uh, since that sparkly night, Maestro Farkle McBride conducts all the instruments he's ever tried. His happy heart sings to brass, drums, winds, and strings. The remarkable Farkle, Farkle is at last, and this is a big one, and um, satisfied. The end. I hope you enjoyed the book. Remarkable Farkle McBride. What a great book about all the different instruments. See you guys. Bye.